Alright guys, time to cry back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And finally some drama here on the timeline in the competitive Call of Duty community. We've got the Florida Mutineers up in arms with Neptune talking about the shortcomings of Awakening and well, some responses coming out and most certainly hitting the timeline. Very much into it, your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really up to the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, this from Douglas said to Martin, 36 days, now 35 days until Call of Duty Vanguard arrives. We are in October officially right now. So we've got to last out one month and then everything's going to kick off at the start of November. Still so many confirmations. I honestly thought that by the end of September things would um, pretty much, well, have been solidified and October pretty much nothing would happen. But there's still going to be so much happening here in October because we've got to have some confirmations that come through. Like I'm sure there's going to be things that happen with like the Dallas spot and also you've got to think about the Washington spot. Like so much is up in the air right now. And well, this also we thought was kind of funny yesterday when Chino was kind of um, well saying that Crimson had blocked him and Crimson was in the reply and says DM. So maybe yeah, there's a good reason why um, well, well, Guachina was blocked, I guess, by Crim6, but I think it well, he maybe is officially unblocked right now. So good news on the timeline on that front. This also, we did, of course, look at the Looney was uh, signing a contract, potentially joining one of these teams as, uh, well, as a coaching staff. And, uh, well, Rise Nation come in the replies and, um, yeah, seemed pretty happy about it. And he says, coming home relatively soon. Of course, some bait on the timeline. Rise are definitely the organization that, uh, well, not necessarily bait the most, because they certainly do want to come back into COD. They've said it many a time. The founders have said it. They've um, implied it on their Twitter account. They want to return to Call of Duty at some point and to get a franchise spot when it expands. I wouldn't be surprised if they do achieve that next year, hopefully when expansion comes through. And maybe at that point, Looney could return to Rise. Because there was some talk this season that maybe Looney could follow the likes of, um, I mean, maybe he still will, but I'm not exactly sure he will, Slasher and Gunless, who he was on with Rise Nation back in World War II, over to Los Angeles Grillers. I'm not sure if that will be the case. We don't really know. But um, yeah, Rise once again indicating their intention to come back into Call of Duty. I don't think it will be happening this year. But to be fair, we know that that Washington spot, or at least uh, the rumor. Uh, Chicago spot which could be moving to Washington is apparently in discussion by not only the Washington Justice Ownership Group but also some other party. Who's that other party? We don't really know. Could it be Rise Nation? It is um, It is right now tough to say but I don't imagine that Looney will have signed there already because um, if that was the case then uh, well you know we'd have thought that you'd have heard some announcement about Rise coming in before Looney actually signs to a team that may not even be coming into the scene. But this of course from Cronus CDL Intel back in uh, well, the 3rd of September right now talking about the mutineers and what the hell they are playing at this offseason because it doesn't exist exactly look spectacular. We haven't really heard much about it in the, in the entire month, but um, you know, a lot of people would say that Sky's an Awakening, does that duo really work? Like, uh, never really, like, one of them was firing at all cylinders, while the other one wasn't. You never really got two of them playing well at the same time. Of course, Neptune was probably their shining star of the season. He apparently is going to the Mutineers alongside Crimtix, Clayster, and Hydra, and then they're bringing Yeet in off the sub bench, and apparently keeping Havoc, even thinking about bringing Daft Paddy into the team. So, it's kind of chaos right now with the Mutineers. One thing that is for sure is that the 2021 season was significantly worse than what they achieved the year prior in Modern Warfare. You can see right here like um, in terms of placings, 8th place, 10th place, they got 6th at the Stage 3 Major, 8th, 10th and 8th, like um, a pretty tragic season on the whole, especially given that at times we thought Mutineers were competitive, right? They were maybe going to mix it up with some of the top teams. They got some good series results, but on the season only won $65,000 in prize earnings which is um, really nothing to what they achieved last year. You can see right there this from Roosevelt as you can see like in the 2020 season $365,000 they earned, 430000 total just because, um, I mean, they had a cracking season there, right? They won many of those online events, those online home series last season. And, um, you know, I mean, fair play to the Florida Mutineers for doing so. They achieved that with a five-man roster when Frosty was on the team and they had more veteran talent. This season, it hasn't really been the case. They haven't seemingly been able to get the best out of their players. And um, it is kind of a surprise to me they're continuing to build around a pretty similar way. Now, Neptune certainly has some thoughts on the matter, as well, Chrome points out right here. And Real PD Gaming initially puts on Reddit, I believe. This, I believe, is a VOD from, well, obviously during the Vanguard beta summer. Time. So it's a little bit old. I'm sorry for, you know, how choppy this is, but it certainly is interesting to hear what Neptune has to say on the situation. Talking about Awakening, I feel like he's pretty much a one-man army, not necessarily plays the game in the correct way. And um, yeah, this is probably something that Neptune wouldn't be saying if he was still going to be teaming with Awakening and teaming with that organization going into next season. Which, um, yeah, maybe, well, adds more fuel to the fire of the possibility he'll be joining the subliners. But um, yeah, certainly talking about Awakening not necessarily being the, well, a very talented player, but not necessarily playing the game in the perfect way. And, um, well, the issues that that caused ready for the mutineers last year. You guys just never had any chemistry as a team. We never had any chemistry and no one like was a good leader. Like we didn't have a good leader and we also just didn't work well together to be honest. Like, yeah, just simply put, we didn't work well together. I feel like it, it just has to do with our personalities that didn't mesh well. Like awakening, I don't know why, it just never felt like I was on the same page as him like ever in the game. Like I think he's really talented. But that's just how I felt and I feel like we never worked towards uh, like getting that better.
And that's one thing that's hard about teaming with him in particular is that he's like a... The best way I can explain him, in my opinion, is he's like a one-man army. Like, that's how he plays the game. He's going to play the game like... Like, he's going he's gonna to take every single gunfight. And he doesn't involve his teammates in anything he does, you know? And that's not like a good way to win at all. And, like, you're never going to win like that. Maybe in like Modern Warfare or something, but not in, in a game like Cold War. Where all it took was just teamwork. He he was decent as Lance as for pretty much the same. Nah, he's 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 like good as f he's talented, like that guy is talented as f But I'm not trying to roast him or anything, it's just like we didn't work well together. I'm talking about awakening. Just drop his sock. I mean bro, I'm just I'm just being truthfully honest, like, I, and I'm not even, like, roasting him, really, like, there was a lot that happened that, like, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about, but, I'm just describing how we all were as teammates, like, maybe I was like that, too, I don't know, I'm not trying to, like, sit here and cook someone else, but, and I feel like problems like that wouldn't have happened if we just had a good leader, is what I think, too, so, Awakening, he, he, he's a good-ass player, he's gonna be fine for next year, too, he's gonna, he's gonna be fine. But that was just the only problem I had with teaming with him. So Awakening, who has been pretty quiet on the timeline as of late, comes out with the following. Never gonna win. Heard it here first, he says in reply. So of course, you know, he hasn't tweeted in ages. Definitely indicating that, uh, you know, Neptune, of course, all that type of stuff hits the timeline. Then he tweets this out, maybe saying that, like, Neptune is, um, you know, maybe he's not gonna win, right? Maybe he's not good enough to actually win championships in Call of Duty. And Awakening doesn't think that, um, you know, Neptune has what it takes in the same way that Neptune doesn't think that Awakening has what it takes to be a top Call of Duty player. It is very interesting. It's a massive surprise to me personally that Sky's an Awakening might be sticking going into next year. Like, um, you know, that duo never really caught fire right in Call of Duty Black Ops Card War. Awakening was great at the start of the year, then he fell off to really towards the end, as we'll look at here in a second. Skies was, um, you know, pretty lackluster right at the start, then he became really good, but they um, they kind of flip-flop, right? I would keep one or the other and decide what you're going to do, because I think some some teams would certainly be looking at a guy like Awakening as a very good flex player. Like, you know what a guy like Kami can do in that flex role, and it's very valuable to have a good flex player, and I think that Awakening was one of the best, actually, during Modern Warfare. Like, um, Yes, maybe he was a one that man army a little bit, right? But obviously he would do that a lot. He was one of the best players that I noticed during Modern Warfare of running around the map. And he would, let's say he has an M4 in hand. He would run around the map and deliberately look for an MP5 on the floor, pick it up, and then he could use both weapons, right? He'd be running around dominating with both weapons in hand. That's something that you can have a very valuable in terms of your flex role. Maybe mutineers are like, okay, let's just keep that going for next year. At the same time, though, if it doesn't really work with the team, like, um, I think they could get a fair bit of money for Awakening, maybe for some other organizations. If some of the rosters are looking to make moves, it's tough to say what the best decision is, but again, Neptune not convinced that Awakening plays the game the right way, and Awakening is saying maybe a pretty similar thing about Neptune, right? Will the subliners roster have close to Chrome 6, Neptune, and Hydra? Will they achieve success, right? Does Awakening, is Awakening correct in the fact that Neptune, maybe um, yeah, maybe he's, uh, well, too off the leash at times to actually win championships? In my perspective, he's very talented under the leadership of Clayster and Crimson. I don't think that team is going to have any issues getting Neptune on the right page and uh, having the talent, at least on paper, to actually, well, take down championships, especially in a game that is relatively similar to Modern Warfare, at least in terms of the engine. This I thought was interesting as well, actually, from Frosty. So, of course, he was on the Florida Mutineers when they won a, well, a few championships during Modern Warfare with Awakening and Skies and a very similar team. Of course, they did have Ferro at the time, rest in peace, which, um, of course, obviously was a massive talent and, well, a huge benefit to that organization. And as you can see right here, this when they won the Minnesota Home Series, Awakening Skies and Frosty going 37-23 and 23 for the win. Ferro with an incredible amount of engagement as well and the most skills in the entire lobby. Just what he does. But, um, yeah, this is really what happened in 5 5 and of course I mean the tragedy that happened with Pharaoh and uh, then Frosty leaving the team or effectively getting dropped from the team definitely did not I think set up mutineers for success last year especially when this comes out here from Lion Man when Awakening was so good at the start of the year we were talking about this guy so much right at the start of uh, the Black Ops Cold War season because his, his first blood rate especially on Checkmate for example was just outrageous he had 22 in 6 in first bloods in stage 1 his damage per 10 minutes was fantastic in hardpoint in it well especially in stage 1 and then really it fell off quite dramatically towards the end of the title this could have some 
something to do with the map pool maybe that was changing for the mutineers over the season but it's just in terms of numbers from stage one to stage five like um it was a pretty massive fall off ready for awakening in terms of what he did if you look at the skies one it's probably the opposite picture to be honest but um that's just how things kind of went so awakening definitely um well he's definitely on the radar of being one of these players that has been discussed on reddit the last couple of days kind of like a one game wonder he was very good at cold war at the start but um he was obviously dormant in modern warfare and so much discussion about him when he came into that florida team is like completely switching that squad up and taking them to the next level and understandably so but uh, can he perform again and does neptune think that he has what it takes in a 4v4 environment that is um well certainly still one that is up for debate this other was pretty funny actually the los angeles grillers came out with they put the googly eyes and all the cdl logos a few of these are pretty good the optic one's kind of funny minnesota's kind of good i think my favorite might actually be the paris legion like it just looks so funny this thing but um anyway there was a few decent ones they did right here and uh, los angeles grillers their own logo works actually pretty well with this but something that also was kind of interesting from a well sledgehammer games right here the los angeles grillers tweet out the googly eyes on the sledgehammer games logo and they go for the new profile pic and they put it in right here definitely um you know definitely implying it to a degree the sledgehammer are very interested right now in the competitive scene which is great to see like if they're keeping up with what those kind of pros that you know pro accounts are memeing about on the timeline definitely a good sign that sledgehammer are going to be significantly involved here with competitive play and uh, with any luck that means uh, you know a good league play system early on and hopefully get some good interaction with the professional players for this upcoming year thought this is pretty cool that Makano actually puts on the reddit here that um, just because we were talking about los angeles grillers this is what could be you know some sort of design for the loading screen right here you go into quick play and in the bottom right hand corner you've got match of the week with the los angeles grillers for example versus los angeles thieves just something simple like this from sledgehammer could uh, go a long way to be honest too while helping promote the competitive call of duty scene and just this question for you guys to finish off the video if the washington rumors aren't true that that nrg chicago spot is going over there what other city would you like to see come into play i think i'd like to see another uk one at some point i'd like to see of course um madrid get a spot on that and the spanish team maybe a manchester spot here in the uk and um, i'm sure there's other cities in, in well the us that make a fair bit of sense and at some point i'd like to have a you know sydney spot or something down in the apac region as well but very much intriguing your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it i'd greatly appreciate a like on the video i'm really upset the youtube i'm gonna know you enjoyed this content i hope you like you may enjoy this content as well and i'll grow the competitive call of duty community thank you as always take care and i will see you next time